What is going on guys? I just wanted to quickly make a video. I was looking back at some footage with the interview with Sarah Lebner, the architect from Canberra in Australia, and she was mentioning something about what software architecture students should be practicing and what they should be learning. And so I want to dig into that video, but then I want to talk about and kind of break that down. That way you have an architect's take a view on what kind of software architecture students should be using. And then you've got an architecture student who's in their third year, uh, their take on it as well. So it should be super helpful and it's pretty quick this video so just stay tuned and uh, watch it all. I get the question quite often what software should should you learn because in uni you know we're opened up to this intense collection of drafting software and so we tend to get lost I guess um, when finding out which one is superior or which one we should niche down to. Could you talk about which software you think is prevalent in architecture now and maybe uh, what like software you use at Lighthouse Architecture? Yeah, so the official guidance is to check what firms are using in your area. I've heard that there's sort of clusters of different programs being um, more popular in Melbourne compared to Sydney, for example. As I said, the two main popular ones for drafting are Archicad and Revit. I'm biased because I use Revit, so I think yeah. you should use Revit. But then there's also, students have so much to offer in this space. Um, I mean, I only graduated seven years ago and I already feel like a dinosaur in the office sometimes. <laughs> um, so Photoshop or the Adobe suite is really another staple. Um, it's going to be used by most offices. Things like Rhino, um, uh, any, anything yeah, that firms are going to increasingly use that you know, anyone older than you doesn't know how to use, you can be so valuable. And who knows, uh, if we're about to head into a recession, I think learning some unique programs like that could be a really good way to give yourself an edge and remain really employable. And virtual reality is going to take off as well. So yeah, jump on it. Yep. You just finished what I was thinking in my head there. I was just like, and VR and AR, because learning those things are going to make you, yes, as you said, super uh, valuable in the industry and that's how you, yeah, give yourself an edge. Okay, so what Sarah mentioned there was that you should be learning Archicad or Revit and they're two BIM software softwares. So that's BIM as in B-I-M, Building Information Modeling Software. And the reason why these are so popular right now and so much better than using AutoCAD or Illustrator for drafting lines is because what you do is you model up a building with these building information software building information modeling softwares and then from modeling your entire building what you can do is start bringing out plans sections and just your, all of your construction drawings from this model and it does it all at once in, and it's all integrated into one model so then rather than having to do a plan and a section and then um, drawing up new drawings every single time you want a drawing and then if you make a mistake you have to change it and go back and then redo everything and then have to do it across multiple drawings instead you can scrap that and everything is just synced up together so that you work on one drawing it's working on every single other drawing and it updates them synchromatically is that a word i don't know but you get me so that's number one just please learn some revit or archicad any bim software because that is what is popular right now amongst most of the firms out there now next she did mention to learn rhino or any of these new programs so rhino has grasshopper and all this parametric modeling and all these kind of cool features and stuff and I do think that these are definitely really really good resources to practice and learn. I've been looking a lot into Rhino and Grasshopper lately and some of the things you can do with it is just incredible and not just about the designs you can do it's more about efficiently optimizing and maximizing how much you can get out of your effort while modeling and while doing construction drawings. While you might spend 30 minutes creating some kind of drawing in AutoCAD you can bring that into Grasshopper and with the flick of a switch using scripts and you can systemize a lot of things to happen instantaneously through the use of coding, which is what Grasshopper is all about. And so I think Rhino and Grasshopper, they're a bit complicated to get started with and they're not beginner entry level architecture tools. But the sooner you learn them, the more helpful you're going to find them. And that's something that Sarah mentioned as well, that she's been in the industry only for seven years and she graduated seven years ago. And the fact is she's already feeling like she's falling behind and so by you giving yourself these new skills that can bring you into the industry with something new that the people working in it don't have that's going to be incredibly helpful because what I believe is that if you're trying to get a job it's all about how much 
value you can offer the firm you're applying at. If you find yourself in that situation where you can't get a job, maybe you need to learn some new skills and learning these new skills that people that already are in the firms don't have, then that's going to create some kind of value and leverage for yourself. And then lastly, she did mention VR, which I think is also really cool. I haven't practiced too much with it. I've been using it a little bit and it's really quite cool. The fact that you can walk through a building without actually uh, having it built is incredible. So definitely play around with some VR, also AR, augmented reality, where you can bring up your phone and then have a look at something in real time. It's incredible the things you can do with that. So definitely go check out those resources. So that's Revit or Archicad, so any BIM software. Uh, have a play around with Rhino, Grasshopper or any of these pa parametric scripted modeling resources. And then finally, have a play around with VR or AR. Even if you're just, have, just putting your foot in the water, if you know what I mean, just have a play around with them and then see what you can do with them because they're really, really quite cool. Anyways, I hope you guys found that video helpful. Um, there are just some quick tips. I also wanted to mention that Sarah and I and another architect from Sydney or Melbourne, I believe, I should probably check that. and another architect from Melbourne will be on a panel of three doing an online Q&A for her new book launch, 101 Things I Didn't Learn in Architecture School. So this is gonna be an awesome event. This is gonna happen on Sunday at 6 p.m. If you guys are around then, um, try and convert that time to your local time zone, 6 p.m. Canberra time to your time. You can just tap it into Google or tell you, tell you what time it is. Hopefully it's not in the middle of the morning for you because it'd be great if you could join us and just hang out. We'll also be answering live questions in the chat as well. We've got about 45 to 60 questions already written down, asked by architecture students. And the theme of the event is really that you can ask anything you want. It's um, you can't ask that. And the idea of that is that you've got a panel of members and so it's gonna be us, uh, these two architects and myself and architecture student and you guys can ask questions anonymously um, otherwise if you're there in the live chat you can just go ahead and ask us and we'll answer it for you i'll be in the chat um so that'll be pretty cool but yeah you can uh, we've got all these uh, questions that have been asked we've got all these questions that have been asked anonymously so we'll be answering them on the day and it'll be cool just to hang out with you guys so if you're free definitely come join us um there'll be links to my instagram i'm sure of it um closer to that date so that's this sunday at 6 p.m canberra time i'll see you guys then thanks for watching